Mobs of violence and hate shall turn us from our home. No Jim Crow law, no police state can stop this freebound soul. Two thousand students bound in jail to lift their heads and sing. Travel on to freedom like some birds on the wing. Heed the call of American souls, side by equal side. The freedom ride of the 60s changed America forever. Seeing a, a moving movement, a rolling movement, traveling by bus, through the South, pricking the conscience of the American people. We're taking a large group of students to points of interest that have made uh, a significant influence on our history, and we're doing it with those people who participated in history and helped make the changes themselves. I hope to take a journey uh, back in time to see what uh, it was like for some of my mother, father, grandparents uh, living in America and uh, how segregation really affected uh, their lives. Hallelujah, I'm a traveling. Hallelujah, I'm a fine. Hallelujah, I'm a traveling. Born of freedom to make life. We left Washington on May 4th, 1961. Some on a Greyhound bus and some on a trailway bus. And in a little town called Rock Hill, South Carolina, my seatmate, Abba Bigelow, the two of us tried to enter a so-called white waiting room. And the moment we started through the door, a group of young white men attacked us and left us lying in a pool of blood. But because of the violence that occurred in Anniston, Alabama, between Atlanta and Birmingham, the burning of the bus, and the beating of the Freedom Riders on the trailway bus in Birmingham, core suspended the ride. And I came back to Nashville, Diane Nash and the students here took the position that we could not allow the threat of violence to stop a nonviolent campaign. John was beaten and jailed uh, subjected to horrible abuse and uh, and still with all of that uh, he lives in Congress uh, still seeking to help create what he calls the beloved community Jail door open and they walk keep your eyes on the prize hold on, hold on. and they were not trying to be martyrs they were afraid they were anxious they had families, but they said, I will do X. I will no longer accept Y. And then lived it out. Ordinary people. And again, for me, they are one, this nation's greatest gift. But I guess you could say of an analogy of what we're seeing today, I, I kind of figure it's all as, uh, I guess you could say archeologists, and like we was picking through the bones a little bit of all the history, but now that we had the people talk in front of it, it was like they're putting flesh to the bones. And it was suggested that the 10 of us that had been selected write a note to our loved ones in the event of our death, put it in a, an envelope, left them with Diane to be forwarded to our families if we were killed. And I told my mother, I love you so much. But I've got to go. She said, you can't. You can't go. You can't do this to us. And I said, Mom, I've got to go. I love you. And she shouted, you've killed your father, and hung up. When we were driving into the bus terminal, there just there didn't seem to be any traffic or people on the streets. And we got off the bus, it was it was quiet except for the the media there. And then all of a sudden, from the terminal, from around the corners, from everywhere, people.
and they were screaming, get them, kill the niggers, get them, get the niggers. Being a little taller than some of them and being white, I kind of figured I stood out a little bit. So knowing what was coming, I bowed my head and I prayed. And in that moment, I had the most powerful religious experience of my life. It made me know that no matter what happened, whether I lived or whether I died, it was going to be all right. But I was grabbed and pulled over a railing, thrown to the ground. And as I got to all fours to try and get back to the group, I was kicked in my spine. That's when I had three vertebrae broken. I was thrown forward through on my back and a boot came down in my face. And that's basically the last thing I remember. Those of us who are on the Freedom Ride, we will continue the Freedom Ride. I'm not sure that I'll be able to, but we're going on to New Orleans, no matter what happens. We're dedicated to this. We'll take hitting, we'll take beating. We're willing to accept death. But we're going to keep coming until we can ride from anywhere in the South to any place else in the South without anybody making any comments, just as American citizens. It's an honor to do it again. Uh, the first part of our panel discussion is going to be that day in Montgomery when the Freedom Rides actually arrived. And the moment we started down the steps, an angry mob just came out of nowhere. First attacking not us, not the Freedom Riders, but members of the media. And the mob turned on us, started beating Jim and the two of us up against the wall. And we were left lying in a pool of blood. And it was Floyd Mann, the public safety director, who came up and he pointed his gun straight up in the air and said, there'll be no killing here today, there'll be no killing here today. And the mob dispersed. That was the period of time where I started making decisions about whether I could do a better job of coordinating from Nashville or from Montgomery. And so very shortly I came into Montgomery, but there were still um, students in Nashville that kept the, organ the um, office running. Please go in the very front row. Freedom Riders in the front row, please. Okay, we're, we'll just take photos for about 30 seconds straight here, so um, just keep smiling. And call it smiling. <laughs> As someone had told me back in 1961 that you would see Vanderbilt University, uh, Tennessee State, and Fisk and American Baptist together uh, on a bus, or to see the large number of African American students uh, attending Vanderbilt, it is, it is so gratifying, it is so moving. Martin Luther King's quote that everyone kept repeating was, um, you haven't lived until you found something worth dying for, and I haven't found that yet. And I realized, you know, that's pretty profound and it's pretty inspiring. And so coming back to Vanderbilt, um, 
you know, I want to look for something that really inspires me. Coming to Vanderbilt in a totally different environment. It was my first experience as a minority, and it was just very difficult to adjust in trying to identify these feelings and, you know, what is this history, where does this come from, like, where do I fit in American society, basically. And hearing the Freedom Riders talk just put that in a different light, and I just feel like I was in the 60s this weekend. <laughs>